All right, um, so today we're going to tell you about the story of Jason and the Argonauts. It combines pretty much two different plays that were written. First, obviously, being the Argonautica, written by a guy named Apollonius. And then the end of the story combines uh, another play called the Medea, which is a character in this story, uh, which was written by a very famous playwright, playwright named Euripides. Um, so, from the creation myth, which we looked at yesterday, there's kind of three big things when it comes to Greek mythology. The first one being the role of prophecy and fate. Pretty much any prophecy that is given always comes true. And the idea of any type of Greek myth is that it's always explaining how something came to be. Uh, and also, I want you to pay special attention to how the gods um, affect the lives of the characters in the story. Um, so where the Argo voyage or the Argonautica kind of fits in is somewhere in after Hercules, um, before Oedipus, and about a few hundred wars before hundred years before the Trojan War. Um, there is obviously some debate with this. I mean, there's no really exact date for it, but that's generally the timeline of how things kind of fall together. Um, so how it starts is there's a guy named King Peleus, and he's the king of Iolcus, and he has a brother named Aeson. Um, Aeson has a baby, but lies saying that their infant son had died. Why would Aeson, the brother of the king, lie? Well, remember that this is also a theme we looked at in Egypt, where if something to ha was to happen to Peleus and he didn't have a son, the bloodline would shift to Jason and his son would become king. That's cool, but if King Peleus is worried about it, he could kill the son of Aeson um, to prevent that from happening. So to protect his own son, Aeson um, lies about saying he has a baby and has him raised in secrecy. Okay, so that son's name was Jason. Um, and as I said, raised in secrecy in a nearby village. Um, so Peleus um, one day sees an oracle, and the oracle gives Peleus this prophecy. Um, it says, Peleus, if ever a man wearing one sandal enters your kingdom, you, sir, are in trouble. Kind of a weird prophecy, but that's the prophecy. So Jason, one day Jason grows up and he goes back to try and claim the throne from his uncle, King Peleus. Um, on the way, an old woman asks him to carry her to the town. Since Jason's a nice guy, he does. Um, he picks her up and starts running. But as he starts running, he trips a little bit and his sandal falls off. Dun, 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 man with one sandal on the way to see King Peleus. Now it looks like the prophecy might come true. Um, so in secret, that woman was really Hera, the wife of Zeus. Uh, why was she disguised? If you guys remember from the creation myth, um, Zeus is not a very faithful husband. Cheating, cheating, cheating. And Hera always kind of disguises herself to keep tabs on him. Um, anyways, so King Peleus meets Jason, sees that he has only one sandal on, and asks Jason, Jason, if you knew a subject of your kingdom was destined to kill you, what would you do? Jason, who has no idea that about this prophecy, says, Puh, I'd tell him to go get the fabled golden fleece. So Peleus says, you know, that's a good idea. So go get it. And Jason says, apparently fairly confident, oh, I'll go get it, don't you worry. So Jason had no idea about the prophecy about the man with the one sandal. Um, not knowing that he was the one who was destined to kill Peleus. Um, so Peleus sends him on this journey that's apparently impossible so that Jason will die and then whatever. And then Peleus is, could keep his kingdom and live happily ever after. Um, so the Argo is just not any ship. Okay? It's a very special ship built by a guy named Argus, um, with helped, uh, helped by Athena. And the wood was from a sacred grove of Zeus, so it's pretty much a magical, awesome ship. Okay, so the Argonauts, um, there's, it's not just Jason. It's a bunch of kind of famous heroes. And again, this is some debate of who was actually on the Argo. There wasn't like a, an, uh, like a roster where people were checked off. Um, so some people say Theseus, uh, who slayed the Minotaur. Some people say Atalanta, who's a, a famous uh, kind of female hero. Obviously, you guys all know Hercules or Heracles. Um, he takes a break from his own quest to come help. Another guy named Peleus, who's the father of Achilles, or the father of Brad Pitt, for you, those of you who've seen Troy. Um, Orpheus, a famous bard, Hercules' brother, and many other famous people. So, 
I don't know what if you guys will have seen these movies, but it's pretty much like if all the famous heroes and action stars all got together to make one super movie called The Expendables. In this case, it's called Jason and the Argonauts. If you've not seen any of those movies I just showed you, this does not make any sense to you. So, um, their very first stop is they go to the island of Lemnos. They sail off and they arrive in Lemnos because they need supplies. Um, Lemnos is interesting because the woman on Lemnos kind of got tired of being housewives and being um, ruled by men. So the natural solution there is to kill all the men, and they did. Um, so Jason arrives with all his Argonauts, and they're kind of like, okay, well, where's all the men here? Only to find out that all the men were murdered. Jason says, oh my god, let's get out of here. Until one of the older women says, wait, wait, wait a minute. And she says to her queen, Queen Hepistel, queen of, queen of Lemnos, uh, Queen Hepistel, do you really want these men to leave? What if you guys want kids one day? You have so many women who have never been in bed with a man. Should you rob them of that pleasure, I guess? And the women are kind of like, okay, like, well, we're not going to marry them because we'll never be ruled by men again. But maybe we can, you know, fool around with them and maybe they can give us some children and things will be cool. Um, so, that goes on for a month. So this whole voyage to get the Golden Fleece is already sidetracked by pretty much Jason is partying like a little frat boy with a bunch of women. Um, after a month, Hercules, who was never got involved with this, um, is watching the boat with his boyfriend. Yes, boyfriend. They didn't see that in Disney, did you? Um, his boyfriend named Hylas. He eventually makes a rousing speech saying, listen, we were supposed to be heroes. We were supposed to get a golden fleece. It's time for us to go. Um, interestingly enough, at the start of the voyage, all the Argonauts did not pick Jason to lead them. They picked Hercules to lead them. Hercules then said, no, no, I will only go on this voyage if Jason leads me. So the people already respect Hercules. Um, so as soon as Hercules says, let's get out of here, they say, okay. So then they go to Bear Mountain. It's the next stop. There's many stops, and I skipped some of them, but they go to Bear Mountain. There's these people called the, we call them the Dolians, um, who are these very friendly people, and they're protected by the god Poseidon. Also on the mountain are these Earthmen. Um, they're evil, as they're evil, not friendly, but they won't mess with the Dolians just because of they're protected by Poseidon. Um, so again, Hercules is left to watch the boat while Jason is off being treated like royalty. Um, and the Earthmen decide to attack the Argo. Hercules takes out his bow and arrow and shoots down all of the Earthmen. Just because he's Hercules, and he's awesome. Um, Jason and all the other Argonauts come back to the boat and see that pretty much Hercules has done everything for them and killed all the Earthmen. So you kind of already start to think, like, who's the real hero here? Uh, Hercules or Jason? Um, so then they sail away, and the winds blow them in a big circle. And they go all the way around, all over the ocean, and they end up back at Bear Mountain in the dark and in the rain, and they, a fight breaks out, and they actually accidentally kill all the Dolians. Jason's all upset and crying, like, oh, I can't believe I killed my friends. But whatever, they move on after that. So then they get to Mycia, or Mycia. Um, so they have like a rowing competition, just to like pretty much who has the bigger muscles. Hercules wins, and as he's doing it, he breaks his oar, or his rowing oar. So they get there, and he goes to find a tree uh, to build a new oar. Uh, Hylas, his boyfriend, goes to get water for the Argonauts. But as Hylas is getting the water, a beautiful water nymph pulls Hylas under the water to make him uh, her husband forever. Um, so nymphs are very like, beautiful women, but they're also kind of half godly at the same time. So they have this power. Hercules, ah, Wrath of Hercules, is very upset. He searches for Hylas all night, never finds him, and in the end decides that he has to continue his labors. That's probably, the, remember, the other myth that you've seen within Disney or something, is he has all these labors he has to do. Um, he says, you know what, I've had enough of this Argo voyage. I'm going to go um, finish my labors. Okay? So, first of all, everybody's very upset. Because um, Hercules is pretty much, had, well, he killed all the Earthmen, got them off the island of Lemnos, and rose the boat better than anybody else. 
So Jason is like, oh no, we can't do this without Hercules. Let's go home. But no. So the next stop is um, they meet. They go to the land where a guy named Phineas rules. Um, Phineas had the power of prophecy, but he abused it. As in, he tell he started telling people too much of the future. So Zeus was mad. So Zeus sent these harpies, which are these crazy little looking women here. Um, so just before Phineas would eat his food, he'd put that Big Mac, just before the Big Mac is in his mouth, the harpy would swoop down and take it out of his mouth. Um, they let him have just enough food that he would stay alive, but just barely alive. Um, so Jason comes there, da -da -da -da, beats away all the harpies, Phineas tells them some secrets about what the future holds for them. Um, so that what he tells them is that you're going to have to pass through a place called the Clashing Rocks. And this is the voyage of the Argo. They started at number one, two, don't worry about the other names. And then right now, they're just before seven, about uh, number six. And you see, it's like on the entrance to the Black Sea. It's very, very narrow. And that's the Clashing Rocks. So the Clashing Rocks, pretty much, when a boat goes through the middle, if it doesn't go fast enough, the rocks clash together and smash the boat. Okay, so obviously, like, oh my god, Jason starts freaking out. Without Hercules, we can't row fast enough to get there. So they say, well, let's send a dove through. So they send the bird through, and they say, okay, if the bird can make it through, then maybe we can make it through too. So they send the bird through, the dove freaks out, flies very, very fast. The rocks clash on the dove, um, pinching its tail feathers, but the dove makes it through. Um, it's not very encouraging because a boat can't row that fast as a dove, but whatever they decide, we have to believe in the gods, let's go. So they paddle, 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 they're going, 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 and boom! Um, Poseidon, or some say Athena, rise up from the water, hold the rocks apart so the Argo can pass through. How nice of them. So clearly, at least some of the gods are favoring Jason. They want him to succeed. Um, after that, two Argonauts sadly die, and Jason again starts whining. I should have never accepted this voyage. I want to go back now. Wah, 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 wah. Not very heroic compared to some of the other heroes that we'll see. Um, Hercules or Achilles or the other famous ones. He doesn't really fit that mold. Um, the rest of the Argonauts are apparently more heroic, and they say, no, we're going to continue on this voyage. Um, so they go through some other weird lands, um, the Tiberinians. Um, in the land of the Tiberinians, when a woman is pregnant and like in, in pain, the man will lie in the bed with her and also make groaning pains like he's the one who's giving childbirth. Um, I don't know why, kind of weird, just the way it is. Then they go to the Mossy Notions. Um, they make love in public. It's perfectly normal to um, just make love with your boyfriend, girlfriend, wherever, right in public, it's no big deal. Also, if they don't like a king's decision, so say he uh, makes a law and they don't like it, they can just throw, them in, throw the king in a tower without food until he changes his mind, and that's cool. Okay, so some weird lands in Greece. Um, and at this time, uh, Apollonius lets us know that both Athena and Hera, um, who's the wife of Zeus, want Jason to be successful. So they're backing him and they're making a plan to help him. Okay? So finally they arrive at Colchis, which is where the Golden Fleece is. Um, king Aedes is the king of Colchis and he's ruthless. And they know that, I mean, if you have a Golden Fleece, and I'll show you, oh, Golden Fleece is like the golden fur of a lamb or a sheep. Um, you're not just going to give it up to some guy who asks for it. Um, and they know that Jason, as we've seen, is kind of a whiny little baby and doesn't have what it takes to get that fleece. So Hera and Athena make a plan. Um, they're going to get Aphrodite's son, uh, Eros, also known as Cupid, um, to make Aedes' daughter, Medea, fall in love with Jason. So yes, there's this cute little baby. And he's going to shoot Medea with an arrow so that Medea falls in love with Jason, and then Medea can help Jason get the fleece. Okay, but Jason doesn't know this. Jason does not know this is the plan. So finally, King Aedes and Jason meet. Um, Jason tries, hey, hey, Aedes, man, can I have that golden fleece of yours? Uh, and Aedes 
obviously says no.